I'm Wesley, and welcome to day one of a very special event, the event that makes the Boston summer a little bit more tolerable, the event that actually makes me want to get out of bed in July, and that is International Zine Month. Um, for those of you who are uh, uninoculated, <laughs> International Zine Month is put on by Alex Reck of Port Portland Button Works every year, um, <laughs> and they put out a list of prompts for anyone who wants to participate, and you can do as many or as few as you want. And so what I'm going to do this year to make things a little special, and now that I have a YouTube channel, is to do a different video every day responding to each one of these prompts. Every day I'll be putting up a new video, and the video will be responding to the prompt and also highlighting a zine that you can download and read for free right now, or, you know, right when I put up the video. Um, a lot of those are going to be from my local zine library and other zine libraries online, but all of them are going to be fabulous, and I'm going to try to theme them to the prompt if I can at all. Um, anyway, so I'll just get started with day one. Uh, day one of International Zine Month, the official prompt off the official list that I printed is, what is a zine? Make a definition in your own words and share it. Which is always a very difficult and controversial thing to try and distill everything into a single a uh, single definition. It's sort of like trying to define what a book is, but even worse, because there are way more standards for books than there are for scenes. So, my uh, official, unofficial defini definition that I've come up with is, and I have it written down so that I make sure I get the phrasing right, an independently made pamphlet that serves as art, information, and or activism. And that's it. Because beyond that, any stuff about format, any stuff about shape and size or digital or non-digital or content or spelling or whatever, it's all up in the air at that point. Topic, all of it. It's just out, up in the air. Um, so the reason I chose this particular definition or phrase it like this is because I want to emphasize the independently made part because a big part of zine culture and a big part of zines is that they are made by individuals or small groups or um, small publishers, they are not mass produced in, you know, the hundreds of thousands. They are not done by major publishing companies. They are individually made or, or independently made, and that's a really big part of it. And as far as what it serves as, I tried to choose some very broad words, art, information, and activism, because I feel like those cover the primary categories, but are also broad enough in themselves that they cover a lot of individual things. So you would say that, you know, a main purpose of zines for a lot of people is self-expression, and I would definitely count that as being part of art and part of information in the sense that you are um, sharing part of yourself and sharing part of your knowledge. And it's a part of activism because... Um, loving and valuing yourself outside of what capitalism says you should love yourself for is a really big part of activism and getting, you know, that is, that is an, an act of activism. Um, and there's a lot of other things that sort of fall into multiple categories. You have documenting history is a big part of it. Um, creating community, I think is a part of art and a part of activism. So anyway, I feel like those three things, art, information, and activism are broad enough to sort of cover the spectrum, you know, because that's the tricky thing about definitions is um, you really don't want to exclude too much. So hopefully this is broad enough that if you're making something and you know it's a zine, then I'm not going to be contradicting you with this definition here. <laughs> the zine I'm going to be showing off today is titled you can make a zine, and that's created by Microcosm Publishing, which is a really great little independent publisher slash zine distro that I highly recommend. I chose this one in particular. There are lots of zines out there on how to make zines, zines on zines, and I chose this one because I feel like it goes a little bit more in depth. It's uh, more prose written. It's not just strictly giving you a how-to on folding without talking to you a little bit more about what the purpose of zines are and how you might fit into the community and just just sort of getting your feet wet in 
a way that encourages you to create, and you absolutely can, as the title says, you can make a zine, but I feel like this also gives you a little bit more information to feel more confident in making your zine, and I really hope that it does for you. Highly recommend checking it out. It's available as a free PDF, and I will link it in the description and everything. Of course, in the description I'll also be linking the official prompts list, and um, anything else that seems relevant as the month goes on. If you are participating in International Zine Month in any way, I hope that you have a lovely one, and that includes if you are just watching these videos. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I'd love to see any of your work, any of your zines, any of your questions, anything like that. And if you've never made a zine before, or you've sort of been thinking about it, or you're just curious about it in any way, I think that this is the perfect time to to get going on it, and hopefully these videos will provide a lot of resources for you to do so. Just for fun, if you would like to get a block print of the little International Zine Month stamp thingy that I <laughs> made and used at the collage thing at the beginning of this video, then let me know. I'm happy to print it onto fabric so that you can use a patch or a sticker or a piece of paper and send it off to you just to start sharing the zine love. So just let me know in email or in the comments below, whatever you want. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow!